picture a guy with a TikTok account where he absolutely loves televisions and like he buys TVs and goes over the specs of them and they're really detailed and they're very well edited and each yeah. of his TikToks get like 37 views. <laughs> and so then somebody recorded a video of him raging at a party, smashing it. It gets like 7 million views in 48 hours. And then he has this big new following and then he tries to immediately go back to reviewing his favorite new Samsung LCD TV and it goes back to like 37 views. Yeah, and now he has like, to think to this. himself, yep. maybe I should become a TV smasher. Uh, yep. And then suddenly his new soundtrack becomes, give me something to break. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a montage of him smashing people's, give me something to break. Dude. <laughs> I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Guys, welcome back. Oops, the podcast. Julio and Ryan hanging out, doing it. The dog days of winter. We're getting through it and yeah. we are ripping. How you doing, pal? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Julio? I'm good, man. Uh, I hope everybody had a nice Valentine's Day. Uh, I know I did. Me too. Yeah. I hope a lot of you had sex. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We do hope that for you. I wasn't saying that Julio and I were doing that, but I just hope you did. <laughs> um, it's possible. It is, but it's hard to say. I'm not. I'm not speak. I'm not speaking for either of us. <laughs> but just hoping that everyone had a little fornication. There you go. Had a boy. Had a boy Lynch. Um, I love it. I love it for all of you. I had a nice time, dude. Hill and Hill Dog and I went on a little quick trip for Valentine's Day. A little vacay? Yeah. V because so as we record this, guys, uh, it's a day or two before I tape my special. Um, because I gotta go to Chicago. So, you know, the timeline is a little behind at this exact moment that we're talking about this. Mm. But I will say, um, Hill Dog and I, because I had this big week kind of leading up to doing the special, I have to go to Chicago early. I didn't think we were going to be able to be together on Valentine's Day, which is going to end up being true. Uh, so we thought maybe we should go do something the weekend before. I didn't have any road weekends booked. I didn't put in avails for the comedy clubs in the city. And I was like, I also need to get some sun so that I don't look like a cadaver on my special <laughs> so i don't know if you guys can tell i got a little bit of sun hopefully it's playing for the camera here you know it looks good what do you think you, uh, have, you have some pigment i'm a little sun kissed mm -hmm. uh, which is all we really need so and that but also the idea of having a nice relaxing romantic weekend to kind of clear my head and for us to spend some nice quality time together and it's very conducive with the type of trip that hill dog really likes which is you stay at a, at a solid hotel that has like a good setup where theoretically you don't need to leave. Um, and you can kind of chill by the pool and order food and whatever, or you could do that on the beach as well and just get some sun, take naps, go to bed early, big breakfast, like that kind of vibe. So we were supposed to go Friday night and stay until Sunday night, right? So I booked a hotel for two nights. Got a good deal, right? Love to see it. Mm -hmm. Two nights. So after I booked that plan, I realized there was something sort of not perfect about it in that we're arriving late on Friday night. So we're not even really getting to like utilize the hotel. How late? We get in at like 11 p.m. You're landing. So we're landing and going to bed and waking up and sort of just like, but it, there's no real way around that in that scenario, right? But then on Sunday, checkout is early. So even if I request a sort of late checkout, like if they may not be able to give me later than 12. It's a popular hotel. We went to Miami, by the way. Popular hotel, needed to be out. So then our flight is at 8.45 p.m. or whatever. So we've checked out of the room. Now we have to have them store our bags. We want to go to the beach. But then if we want to shower, we got to like have a bag for the day and go no. to the spa, which by the way, like didn't even necessarily really have shower. Like it would have sucked, right? So I was kind of having anxiety about that. I then get asked to host the Netflix uh, New Faces auditions on Friday. And I'm like, oh, well, I should probably do that because, you know, I have my special coming out, blah, 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 laying the groundwork, whatever, right? So I asked the hotel if they can push our reservation forward two days. 
So this way, it's Saturday night and Sunday night. Even though we're not staying Sunday night, we would now have the hotel for the entire day, Mm -hmm. which ends up being a solid and a half. And then when we get there early on Saturday, check-in's not supposed to be till four, but if you put your check-in early, blah, 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 maybe they can accommodate you earlier, right? So does that make sense to you? Is this confusing? When when is the Netflix thing and where is the Netflix thing? New York City, Friday night. So we change our flight to 7 a.m. Saturday morning. First flight out to Miami. So you didn't go Friday night? No. They they allowed us to change the reservation in the hotel. Got like, it. No problem. They're like, the guy's like, I'll ask my manager. I'll call you back in a few hours. I don't expect that to happen. I just get an email of my, about my updated reservation. So it's now Saturday night, Sunday night. Check-ins at 4 p.m., but I mark it for earlier on Saturday. Okay. We take the first flight out Saturday morning. We oh, Dude, we're on the beach by 1130. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty solid, pretty easy and solid. The weather was great. They accommodated our early check-in. So now we're in the room by 1130. And now on Sunday, we have the room the whole day. We can go up to the room, we chill, whatever, and then then can mosey on to the airport. And we had kind of a shitty flight. So how big of a difference I think that that made is pretty remarkable. You said that you don't like to leave early. You'd rather, you know, instead of killing a Sunday, stick around, walk around, and make a full day of it before flying back. So I feel like you prefer to leave later in the day anyway. So uh, for, for like a road weekend, yes, agreed. But this is different. This is like bay time. There was no work. Bay time. You know what I mean? This was bay time. Uh, and we are spending as much time together as we can without like crushing ourselves. Because Hill, you know, has a pretty demanding work schedule. So she couldn't leave till late Friday night. And then she has to be back for work on Monday morning. So... Um, you know, we wanted to milk it as much as we can without crushing ourselves. So all little things considered, like all these little tricks and whatever, it just makes it so that you can sort of live your life when you get back and work and do what you have to do without having like the scaries or without having to have like the worst day when you get back. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? All these little things. So to me that ended up working out really nicely. Good for you guys. Uh, Yeah. That's great. That who, whose idea was to initiate going to Miami for this trip my original plan I was like I want to go away to get some sun before we film or whatever and I was thinking of like a yoga retreat and Hillary's like well I can't do that like I don't have time like, mm-hmm. and they're just the flights are just hard when it's to some of these places that I want to go to like Guatemala or you're like, planning on leaving the country I wanted like a to. spontaneous out of the country trip I wanted to yeah mm. um but I wanted to spend time with her too. So like this just ended up making way more sense. There was a bunch of flights. Like sometimes when you're flying to some of these places, uh, not only is it slightly farther away, but there's just inconvenient flights. So it turns into a thing where if you have literally, you know, a day and a half total to figure out a trip or two days or whatever, like you got to make it convenient. So anyway, it all ended up coming together. She was thrilled with it all. I, I, I had a great time too. And I did something fun. Uh, that I wanted to make into a video, but it didn't work out. But I recommend this. I think this is a fun trick. A fun micro prank mm. for Valentine's Day. So one fun thing that you can do is wear silly underwear without them expecting it. Everybody has a good time. <laughs> I bought a thong underwear mm. to surprise her. And I was going to make a video where I filmed her reaction to it. Uh, and unfortunately, when she came out of the bathroom, she was naked. So I cannot use the video. Did you set up a camera and everything? You yes. ready to be silly? Yes. Mm. And at first, she thought that I was wearing her underwear, which oh. <laughs> was an insane reaction. She goes, honey. And then she went, honey. <laughs> Is this a real problem? I was, she's like, and I was like, no, I'm being funny. Ha ha. Anyway, it was pretty fun. We had a good chuckle over it. Nice. So I think that being sexy can also equal being funny. Oh, 100%. So if you have a funny little trick up your sleeve for when you guys are in your room on Valentine's Day or whatever, that could work in the future. 100%. Sil- silly is sexy. Silly is sexy. Unless you get too silly. If you get then too that silly, gets annoying. then it gets weird. <laughs> nice. Mid-sex um, being too silly, not the move. No. <laughs> <laughs> Talking like a baby, not the move. I love you. I don't even want to touch that. <laughs> Love that. Dude, I, I, um, I'm so glued to your social media because we work together and I feel like I have such good tabs on like your whereabouts and what you're up to. And when I see you post stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, I knew about that. When I saw 
you on Sunday morning posting a video of like you two like at a pool, obviously in a <laughs> tropical area. Like, I, I wouldn't. Fuck? I was kind of like for half a second. I was like, huh. <laughs> G didn't mention this to me at all. I felt like I felt for half a second. I was like, I should know about this, but you're your own person. I was really happy to see you guys have that fun time. I'm good. Thank you. Bro. You also, you also glossed over this, uh, having a bad flight back. I don't know if you were planning on mentioning it again, but when we were setting up, Julio mentioned that the flight that he was on, which is what, three hours, mm -hmm. they didn't have TVs on the plane. Mm -hmm. I can't wrap my head around a world that like, today in 2024 where you buy a ticket and then you randomly get a plane that potentially doesn't have a tv on it that's it's insane wild. to me it's wild that that should be illegal so it, was, it really dude, is upsetting yeah. it was one of the it taught me a lesson whoa fucking moron did you guys hear that <laughs> Are we, we're, we'll, we'll keep that one and that was the loudest that we've ever that's the loudest had noise background ever noise in the history of the okay pod. Yeah, like you have to. If you, I've learned now that it, it appears, I just need to travel with my iPod. All, or my sorry, my iPod, my iPod. Jesus, my iPad. If I'm going to be traveling, because mm -hmm. if I end up in a no TV situation, the no TV situation, they have like free entertainment that you can use, but if you from your own devices, which is it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work, but it did kind of work on my phone. But I was like, the screen's too small. Yeah, like this sucks. But anyway, it was a shitty flight. But dude, it reminded me of this reminds me of something else. So I'm on a flight one time and on this particular flight, I happened to be upgraded to first class and the flight was super delayed. And the reason why was hilarious. Somebody had like a giant check. Like, you know, the check you win <laughs> when you win a golf tournament. Yeah. Like, oh, Shooter McGavin. Or like, it just reminds me of Happy Gilmore, like holding the big check. It was a giant cardboard check for five hundred dollars. And the and nobody could figure out where to put it. And like it couldn't if if they like bent it, it would have like fucked the check up or something. So that was not an acceptable option. So they're trying to figure out what to do with this stupid check, dude. This big stupid check. Did they why didn't they just put it underneath the plane? No questions asked. You put golf bags, oversized things underneath the plane. Because it was it's fragile. But it's not it's not a real check. I can you bring that so, check to the bank? Don't they? That's don't they the give question you the, I have. You make a half court shot at a college basketball game. They give you the big check, and then afterwards, when you walk off the court, don't they give you a real check? Maybe and it's just like this is just like art and like a memory. So that's what I always thought, and that may still be the case. But I, yeah, I just thought that she needed the check because she was going to cash this giant check. <laughs> Which, by the way, like, don't don't all the banks now have an app? Like, can't you like? Scan I get it. I get that it's a big check. Like, maybe you have to step eighteen feet back to get it all in the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's no way that that's a real check. Right. Yeah. Like, maybe she just wanted it as and a it was for five hundred dollars. <laughs> I feel like there should be a minimum amount of money for you to uh, win or to give out in order to print out a big check. Well, it should be at dude, least a thousand dollars. It's funny you say this because the people in first class started saying that they're like all this over $500. I'm like, guys, Hey, that's a lot of money to most people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's not out ourselves. Right. The people are going to revolt. Mm -hmm. uh, but no. Dude. So what did they end up doing? They like figured it out. And but we were, we were all laughing. Dude, I have a picture of the check. So this is funny. They so, try to get, sneak it onto the plane. So it wasn't sneaking it onto the plane. Like she was bringing it on the plane and then like it didn't fit and it just turned into this weird thing. So I was like, Oh man, I wish I had taken a picture of it. We were all kind of chuckling amongst ourselves uh, sitting That's there. That's fun. That's fun. And the woman uh, who was sitting across from me had taken a picture of the check. And I was like, oh, can I have that? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, can you airdrop it to me? And my airdrop wasn't working for some reason. But I was like, it's inappropriate for me to like get this woman's number right now. She's like an older lady. It would, if I was like, oh, can you just text it to me? It would have been weird. So like neither of us suggested that. I was like, let me just take a picture of your phone holding it. Is that what that was? Yeah, that's oh. a photo of her phone, and I, I get, like, but it was it was an interesting like awkward sort of moment mm -hmm. where I'm like, it, like I'm not gonna ask because it's gonna seem I'm, I'm like being a creep or something. Mm -hmm. I get your train of thought going into that spiral of anxiety, <laughs> but I think that's okay. You guys had a shared experience. If you like, hey, can I, you text this to me? Airdrop's not working. I think texting would be easier than airdropping, especially if she's older. I think there's no issue yeah. with her sharing it. Just don't text her ever again. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> you text her the next day at midnight. So, I, <laughs> I, Dude, I also didn't want to get rejected. 
uh-huh. if I like if the idea of her being like, I'm not comfortable giving out. Like that would have been so awkward, dude. Oh, I I'd love to see your face after asking <laughs> that, but I don't think she would have said that. Did it end up being on the plane? Did they put it? Yeah, underneath? I don't know, dude. I don't know where the fuck they put it, but dude, I'll say this. I was at the airport with Hill Dog early in the morning and I had just smashed an energy drink. And at one point she's like, we might have to implement a no prime before noon policy for you when we're at the airport because you are bouncing off the walls. Losing your marbles. I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, you got to be careful. You got to be careful with that stuff. <sighs> Guys, if you're looking to up your game in the cold a bit, we highly recommend checking out the Me Undies Contoured Ball Pouch and Caddy. Mm. Gives you a nice little zesty juice. Brings kind of all the action to the front. Gives you a nice little bulge. I just feel... Confident, cool, collected, silky smooth. Well, Ryan, that's nice that you, that feeling compact feels good to you. It does. You know, that must be good. It must be nice to be have that kind of a hog on you. Yeah. Where compact is the word that you want to use to describe what you got going on there. On I there. mean, I guess so. Yeah, I think maybe I'm speaking for the everyday man when I say we want to look like we are packing, not that we are compact. So... <laughs> Some of us have to bring it back while others of us want to make sure that we present in the best possible way. So here we are presenting to you the contoured ball pouch and caddy because look, it's all about perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Because you might have something more impressive than you actually have. And depending on the right light or the right mood or the right percentage of humidity or the the right sort of crescent to hold on to whatever you got going on there. You might be able to trick somebody into thinking you got more than you actually do. <laughs> that might be something that's valuable. That's a really good point. Power perceived is power achieved. <laughs> as Ernie Johnson once said in the substitute. <laughs> so anyway, look, during this season, good things come to people in big packages at Me Undies. Get 20% off of your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash oops podcast. That's MeUndies.com slash Oops Podcast for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Having cash, dude, if you're going on a trip with your girl or you're doing stuff with your girl, having cash is just so attractive. Mm. And not to put, the, you know, I'm not to be calling myself attractive. But you carry cash. <laughs> you're not saying you're attractive, but... He carries cash around in his back pocket. <laughs> Let me give That's you, all he's saying. <laughs> that is all I'm saying. Let me give you a scenario, okay? We were going to this place <laughs> this weekend, like a place, be, beach club, you know, pool situation. Okay. People doing little stuff for you all weekend, right? Before we left, I got, I like got $50 of singles. I went to the bank with 50, gave it to them. They gave me back 50 singles, an envelope of singles. And the entire weekend... We got out of the car. Oh, welcome, welcome. They take our bags out and they're, they're carrying them. That every single person doing anything like that is getting juiced. Mm-hmm. Hillary at one point is like, oh my God, I don't know. I'm like, I got it. That's hot. That's, that's giving cash in your back pocket energy right there. Hot. So you go to the bank before you went to Miami? Yeah. So you, so yeah, you went out of your way to get the cash. To get a stack of singles so that I can appropriately give people money for their different tasks. Handling it is nice. Ooh, I don't, Hillary's like, do you, do you, I don't. Not yep, sexy. Don't don't worry, I got it. She doesn't have to think about it again for the rest of the weekend. And now I'm in a situation where if you didn't do that in advance, now you're in a spot where you have 20s or and you're, you're maybe giving, if you're going to give people money, you're giving them that amount, an amount they don't deserve, no offense. Like you don't need to give people $20 every time you'll lose, mm-hmm. you'll go broke by the end of the weekend. At least I will. I don't have money like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's that. Or... You don't want to be the, are you working tomorrow? Like, I'll get you. I'll get you tomorrow. Are you working tomorrow? I don't, I don't have, but I'll get you whack. No, it's very, that's very Jennifer Coolidge, White Lotus. Juice. <laughs> yeah. Juice him. Yeah. Rip a cup. Boom. This guy, that guy, anybody who does anything the whole weekend is getting a few bucks and your girl doesn't have to feel awkward that you're not, that people aren't tipping and you got to tip at those kind of spots. Yeah. You're a good guy. And you're sexy for doing that. <laughs> it's not even virtue signaling, though. I'm I not, know. I'm not trying to be like, I'm a good guy. It's just like, you should be, it's what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. To me, it's like it's a, a side effect of, like a side effect of being generous is you get to be sexy. So I don't even, dude, to me, it's not even generous. It, to me, it is what you need, to, what you should be doing. Yes. Somebody who like performs a task where they have to try and can choose not to, those people need to get tipped. Especially in this in service, mm-hmm. if a guy comes and puts up your umbrella and puts a puts a t- 
towel on your chair and is asking you, oh, what brings you down here? You got to tip that guy, dude. You cannot, but you're being a cheap piece of shit. Though the, that you need to be tipping. Great. Sometimes you just gotta handle it, bro. Um. So anyway. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, that's sweet. Cool. So I was watching the Super Bowl, and every single, even any any big sporting event, when a team wins and loses, I always see videos of people smashing a TV. Do you see these? No. Like somebody, like uh, San Francisco lost on that final drive by Kansas City, and. I saw a video of like people at a Super Bowl party and oh, yeah. Kansas City scored <laughs> and there was a Giants fan that freaked out and he starts punching the TV. Have you seen any videos like this I before? Have, yeah. They they happen all the time. Yeah. And let's forget whether or not they're staged. I feel like a lot I of them are staged. Say, I let's sometimes. pretend that they're not staged. What kind of anger issues do you have to erupt? And smash somebody else's television. Was it somebody else's in this in this video? So regardless, if, if it's if it's your own TV, let, let's let's put that aside for a second. Okay. The act of smashing a television at a Super Bowl party, you literally are ruining everything. The night is over once you smash the TV. So it's these videos violent. are happening at a party. These videos happen at parties. People uh, get angry. They pick up a TV. They throw it. They smash it. Like, you're getting violent. <laughs> like, it's fucked up. Yeah. Like, that, when that happens, if you witness that, there's no coming back to, like, a neutral, we're all having a good time energy. True. It's like, grab your wife, it's find over. your kids, and get out. Yeah. And, like, you see these videos all the time. And let's assume that they're not being staged. Let's assume the ones that aren't staged, there's ones that are real. Like, how do you come back from that? How can you reinsert yourself to this group of friends as, like... Not the guy that smashed a TV after the Giants lost the Super Bowl. Right. There's no place for that behavior. I just don't get it. And it's every big event always happens. So yeah, dude, like there's you there's three different scenarios that pop into my head from what you're saying. So there's guy who's by himself in his apartment breaking the TV. Maybe he's with one or two other people, but it's his TV. That's already insane. Like a rage level where you now have to clean up a smash TV, <laughs> get rid of it, and go buy a new TV and then get it to your house and then set it up. Now, I don't know if a TV's mounted. If it is, you just ripped a TV out of... Now you just fucked up the wall of your mm -hmm. house. Like, you, you're potentially doing massive damage by doing this, okay? So there's that. Let, to your point, what kind of rage needs to be present for that to be happening? But number two... You're at somebody else's house breaking their TV. I've never like, I guess I haven't seen enough of these. I always just assume it's the guy's TV. But then you hear other people be like, oh man, come on. We were watching the, mm -hmm. but that's crazy. But a party, dude, that's even crazier. Like mm -hmm. that is, you're not friends with the guy anymore level. Mm -hmm. And even if it is staged at a party, I doubt that you could get everybody on board with like, hey, Regardless of whether this is staged or not, I'm going to smash this massive fucking TV and I'm going to scream and I'm going to swear. Whether it's staged or not, I'd still have my fight or flight kick in and get nervous and be on edge. Like, it's not like a chill <laughs> prank. Like, it's a real thing. And like you mentioned, like, oh, interesting. there's there's a lot that goes on afterwards when the camera's turned off, cleaning the TV. Like, you have to call yeah, out of work yeah, yeah, and you have yeah, to go yeah. to Best Buy. Yeah, and if yeah. you break someone else's TV, like, you need to take care of that immediately. Yeah. You're fucking this person's life up. You probably traumatize their kids. <laughs> and then they have to re-log into all of their, like, streaming accounts. I mean, like, you really, it, was it really worth it? Right. I bet you regret it immediately. Yeah, I wonder, dude. But it's yeah. like jumping off a bridge. They say you regret it immediately. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just insane. But, dude, like, I can't imagine a world where that's, like, an orchestrated thing. So first of all, come to my party and then you prank everybody by one of the other guys smashing the TV. Ha ha ha. Like that's weird. Like nobody's going to like that prank. But also like I can't imagine like them trying to rope you into that. They're like, let's, all right, we're going to make a viral video. So everybody here, just, you know, we're breaking the TV at the end of the party. You, you can't get an ad deal for like yeah. smashing a TV. It makes no sense. Unless it's a t like Vizio. Or like, uh, you, like, like smash a shitty TV and get yeah, a new one. Yeah, get, get a Vizio. <laughs> That's not even an app you But yeah, I saw that and I just was like, I'm like, this is so violent. Like yeah. it's so violent and unnecessary. Dude, have you crazy. Have you ever had like a, you know, 
not smashing a TV, but have you ever had like, it, 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 it seems like temper tantrum level of rage. Have you ever had like a tantrum or witnessed a crazy burst of rage at all in your life? I, where I've like made things really like killed the vibe. I've witnessed some for sure, but I had, I had another thought that I want to get to yeah, before yeah, we yeah. do that. The idea of the guy smashing the TV and you're trying to figure out which people on the periphery are in on this and which people are not. And how was this all put together if, in fact, this was arranged? And it reminds me, there's a genre of porn that's like bachelorette party porn. And there's a guy dancing around and then like he dances on the girls. Woo! And then one of the girls at the party like ends up having sex with the guy and everybody's cheering and watching. And there's like older, much older people in this room. There's like grandmas sitting on the periphery of the room. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm wondering, I'm like, oh. how did this grandma end up here? <laughs> like, is it one of those things where like everybody in the room got paid, got to eat for free or like made 50 <laughs> bucks or something? Like clearly not every person in this room is in the sex industry. So like, how did they cast this? Mm. And, or is it even cast? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think, I wonder if there's like a nuance to that where they like truly want it to feel real the way that it maybe it's some like big bachelorette party or whatever. If there was a bunch of people like the aunties and the grandmas and like everybody would be there. So then suddenly when someone's putting whipped cream on the man's penis and fucking <laughs> everyone, everyone's like, and then everyone starts going, come, 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 come. Oh, I have to check this out now, but I can imagine like, you know, like a little old, you know, lady with red hair and it's permed and she's in the background with a plate of like Triscuits. Like, what? yes, dude, you just nailed it. And she's like way in the background because like there's like six or seven different women. Come, come, yeah, come, dude, come, literally. come. There's like, six or seven. Dude, it's crazy. Six or seven. Like there'll be a close up. So they're following the guy along. He's naked. He's shaking his whatever around. And like maybe someone will like poke it. haha. -ha. Like she's obviously not going to be the one doing the sexual things with it. But then I think that's part of it. Like you see who the final person is. Who's like, all right, fuck it. And then people are like, oh, whoa, like Janine's having a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. Like, and I wonder if they are that clever that they wanted to make it seem that real so that whoever's enjoying this mm -hmm. genre of porn is liking, is like really getting into it mm -hmm. or what the deal is with that. Yeah. I haven't seen that porn. I will definitely check it out. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good point. There is a benefit to like doing that with those background people where like you're giving someone porn pleasure, but like at a party smashing the TV, like the people, like the people in the background aren't in on it. We'll say that they're not in on it. Then their reactions, like you hear them being like, yo, what? Like you hear that. And like, to your point and to this, to the point of this whole conversation, like having onlookers who were not aware of what was going on may add to the mystique mm -hmm. of this sort of thing. Yeah. Skewed reality. Yeah. I just don't like it. It's just violent. Yeah. It's too violent. You like you 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 really killed the vibe. I do I don't I don't think you're alone there. I don't think anybody would like that. Like there's fiberglass now in the fucking cheese dip because the TV <laughs> shattered. Like Dude, yeah. And know? it's yeah, and the reason why I bring it up is because every Super Bowl, every World Series, every March Madness tournament upset, you see it happen all the time. And it makes me question like do people do this because they think that they're going to become famous for it? How do you go into the office the next day and be like, you know, people are in viral videos all the time. That's not the kind of viral video that you can like brag about and boast about to your coworkers. Right. Like, what's the point of it? Like, you did something violent. <laughs> I hate it. I hate yeah. it. I hate it. Yeah. I don't understand the allure either. Yeah. Like, you can't build a page with that. But I don't know if people have thought that far ahead hmm. sometimes. They're like, oh, the only thing that's performing well on my on my algorithm is <laughs> me breaking communal electronics. <laughs> I gotta keep showing up to parties and fucking people's shit up, dude. I just picture a guy with a TikTok account where he absolutely loves televisions and like he buys he buys TVs and goes over the specs of them and they're really detailed and they're very well edited. And each of yeah. his TikToks get like 37 views. And so then somebody recorded a video of him raging at a party, smashing it. It gets like 7 million views in 48 hours. And then he has this big new following. And then he tries to immediately go back to reviewing his favorite new Samsung LCD TV. And it goes back to like 37 views. Yeah, and now he has like, to think to himself, yep. maybe I should become a TV smasher. Uh, yep. And then suddenly his new soundtrack becomes 
give me something to break. <laughs> and it's just a montage of him smashing people's. Give me something to break. Dude. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. That's just insane. If you guys like nicotine pouches, we have good news for you because Lucy Breakers are the top of the industry. The cleanest nicotine with a fun, satisfying pouch that pops mm -hmm. and gets that nicotine cooking. Yes. In a way that you can feel quicker and cleaner and give you that razor sharp focus that you love yeah so sometimes you need the boost it's like it's like doing a 50 50 on a rail you're grinding and you need a little something extra <laughs> to keep you focused uh and that's what the uh, lucy breakers are for me at least yeah unexpected skateboarding metaphor from ryan there very very <laughs> nice uh, they come in the eight and four milligram tobacco free 100 percent pure nicotine pouches uh six deli delicious flavors they have unique ones like apple ice and espresso or classics like mint and mango i think the espresso is really fun with your morning coffee mm -hmm. a nice sort of tie in there uh it's almost like you're wearing a set but of energy <laughs> how nice i do like the espresso ones they're great break up your dusty gas station pouches and go to lucy.co slash oops and use promo code oops to get 20 percent off of your first order lucy offers free shipping and has a 30-day refund policy if you change your mind that's lucy.co and use code oops to get 20 percent off and always free shipping and here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Have you ever gotten so angry that like you've lost control? And I'm thinking like as a kid, I don't, you know, anything like that. I don't that. know, man. Like maybe like in very brief moments. Like I remember one time I snapped because I forget what I was having Hillary do, but she kept like cutting me. I think she was like trimming my like, hair and she kept like cutting my ear mm. and i was like stop and she like kept doing it i don't think she even meant to and then i like flipped out at like the fifth time mm -hmm. but like nothing no like i i've heard people talk about like they black out when they get so mad i've never experienced that have you there was a time i went to a a, a birthday party when i was like 10 and we were outside playing basketball. My friend Reed, he had a really nice house. He had a full basketball court and oh, it was wow. like enclosed and gated. Also wow. like his dad played tennis. So like it was, it was sick. Oh, it was how like they a were multi-sport little... court. Yeah. But it was, um, you know, we're playing basketball and then somebody passed the ball to me when I wasn't looking and it was a hard pass and it hit me right in the face and it hurt really bad. And I think I was feeling insecure already because I was best boys with the birthday boy and all of these other guys that were there were on his lacrosse team and I like know them I went I go to school with them but I'm not tight with them so I already was kind of like just like uncomfortable and not feeling very confident you weren't feeling like in the in crowd I, I, I felt out of the loop how old are you at this like point probably 10 okay. 10 and so someone went to pass a basketball to me not maliciously but he hit me in the face really really hard and I fell down and I think I was just on the verge of crying the entire party, just of like, just like I couldn't conduct myself. And I think that was my breaking point. And I remember falling to the ground and then everyone huddled around me and then I just screamed. And I was so embarrassed. I just, I, 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 just, I was just like, Aah! and like, that's like such a bad look. And so I was like, after that happened, there's like four seconds of just silence and everyone kind of stepped back. And then what do you do after that? I realized I was like, that was terrible. I should not have screamed because I was just angry. And then I was probably there for another two hours and it was the most awkward time ever. You're not quite old enough at that point for there to be like full blown middle school, like blowback from that. Yeah. It never, it never, I honestly, it, it never came back to haunt me. But if that was like at a high school party, like that's who you are forever. Does telling that story like give you shame still? I get, I haven't I haven't thought about it in crazy detail until I just explained it because I remember it happened because when I saw the guy smashing the TV, I was thinking about like have I have I ever done anything that violent? And I think it was just screaming. Mm. Um, and I remember looking into the eyes of this guy named Carter Gilpin. And I remember screaming in his eyes. He was the one that passed the ball to me. But he wasn't like, hey, Lynch, catch. No, he was like, oh, I'm sorry. But like, I just felt paranoid and I was already like really insecure. And I just <laughs> just yelled. I screamed. And I didn't say fuck you or scream at anyone. I just went, Argh! And um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and then I cried. And then I've never there's heard no way to like, how do you recover from that? Yeah. How do you become like the cool fun guy after that? Like that was, that killed the vibe. I've never heard of a 10 year old being in touch with like insecurity. Like I didn't know. I don't think I understood what that even meant yet. I probably, that was all probably subconscious at the time. Mm, but, but now you're realizing. Yeah. Now as a, as a mature adult. It's tough, dude. That's a tough luck. But yeah, so I'm glad I don't have, you know, crazy rage like that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's good not to. Yeah. Um, dude, I was on Facebook and it's funny, like Facebook is, you know, at the app that we all know that sort of the boomers really enjoy. So I'll post stuff on there if I have stuff happening because I want people to know and I need people to buy tickets to my stuff, et cetera. So I posted a, a poster for my, my special or something. I forget, but for whatever, I don't, it doesn't matter, but it was like one of my dates, right? Or a video. I don't even know. One of my cousins commented dope, dope and dope. Meaning like, this is awesome. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and my aunt replied, I hope you're joking, Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking that he was talking about drugs. Weed, marijuana, Mary Jane. Right, 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 right. Exactly. And I'm like, oh, that's fun. I was like, I hope that they were able to figure this out. <laughs> between, the, between the two of them. And I, it, w- it would have been a lot for me to then explain it to my aunt and be like, this is like an expression she also lives in Italy, so like she she's even more out of the uh, loop on the specific vernacular. Speaks perfect English, lived here forever, like move, but moved back to Italy at some point. Uh, but I think that dope being a colloquial term for like that's cool. Like I'm not sure she's been around for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was kind of fun to see a little lost in translation moment there. Yeah, it's interesting how difficult our slang can be interpreted if you're not like in on it. 24/7. Oh yeah, seven. Like it's it's crazy. We have new words like it's giving. I don't know even how to like uh, translate that to Spanish and like because I know like certain things that you say in Spanish you say before and you say after what you would normally say in English. So when you say it's giving, I don't know where you would like that. That's a tough concept to right. translate. Right. People are like it's giving. How could it give? It doesn't have hands. Yeah. You're like no, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's giving is a big one right now. Um, I love using it, but I try not to you love overuse it's giving. it. I really like it's giving. It's I think I, I think I have a good pulse on it. I don't think that like that many dudes use it. I think that like you have the sort of like dude using it's giving market on lockdown, bro. No, no. I think you should lean into it's giving. 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 It's. Uh, but it's true. Hillary always says that I talk in too much slang when I speak to foreigners. Like, like in my videos or whatever, we'll be watching like some of the cuts or some of the like footage. And she's like, he doesn't know what you're talking about. Like you're saying like, ah, dude, for sure. Like, I don't know. And for sure. See, that's, that, that's one, that one's been around for a minute, but. Me, unspecifically. I for, like. Is that even a thing? It's been around for a minute. But exactly. Yeah. Like exactly. That's like, exactly. Uh, what is, oh, I know Anya means a uh, year. I forget what minute is in Spanish, but yeah, it must be so confusing. Minuto. Minuto. Un, min- un minuto. I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, dude, like she says that I do that, which is funny, but I try, I try to be aware of that now. Like if I send videos to the like kids in the schools in Afghanistan of like, I want to just like say, I don't know. Very direct. I just talk very slow like this and it's like weird. Mm-hmm. I, I learned that from this girl. There's like this YouTube channel uh, this girl Lexi Limitless I don't know if you guys Have heard of Lexi Limitless uh, She talks really slow In her videos But it's because Like it's an It's an international audience And like people can understand Her better because of it mm. Which is in, she, I guess she is the world record For the youngest person To visit every country Or something Really? I don't think she's doing Much travel vlogging anymore But uh, she had a pretty good She has a pretty good channel She looks like she's like In her mid 20s She's young yeah Wow good for her I know Bless her heart Dude, we had a fun oops moment the other night. Uh, I was at my show in the city, just like a random show that I didn't promote. And I hear the host on stage is at the comedy cellar and he's talking to the people in the front row. And he's like, he's like, oh, dude, he's like, where are you from or something? And he's like, he's and he's looking at his shirt. He's like, Piker Avenue. He's like, oops, delicatessen. What's that? I'm like, oh, fuck. What? I'm like, somebody is at the show right now rocking the oops merch. Uh, and it, so you heard that. Yeah. And oh. I was like, oh, shit. And then I was like. And I went on stage, I saw the guy right there and I made sure to like 
give him a couple like winks mm -hmm. and then after i got off stage i like went and gave and dapped him up i was like a nice dap the army is in the building the oops army is in the fucking building dude yeah give julio a dap after a show he gives he gives really <laughs> solid daps I give you good makes daps. you feel like a real j yeah well let us know if you guys did anything creative for valentine's day i'm curious if anybody has like fun stuff that they do or that they've done that we can all sort of do because I'm always amazed when I hear of some brilliant romantic idea that is like affordable and incredible. And I just think it's nice to maximize uh, the potential of a, of an occasion like that mm -hmm. with good planning. Yeah. I thought what you did was really nice. Yeah. Thanks. It was I really nice. We had a nice time. We had a nice time together for sure, man. Yeah. Uh, very good. Ryan, it has been a big couple of weeks for me getting ready to shoot my special and get all that stuff done. It has been challenging to get my everyday tasks done, and that's why I'm very grateful for having access to Factor. Who has time to get in the kitchen, get ingredients, chop them up, discard what needs to not go into your meal, and then make your meal, and then cook it, and then eat it, and the next thing you know, you have to clean everything up. It's just an absolute mess. Dude, it's terrible. Factor's great. Your meals are ready in two minutes. Uh, they're chef-created meals. They're delicious. And this really nice variety as well. Like one day you're eating curry. The next day you're eating tofu. The next day you're eating chilaquiles. You know what I mean? Like there's all sorts of delicious different cuisines. They do a good job of mixing it up. And it comes in a very nicely compact, stackable, sleek, clean mm. setup. So you take it out. You poke the top, throw it in the microwave, and before you know it, you're eating dinner and you're done quickly. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, Packaging it's, is so sexy. You know, it's great. So, you know, and that's important to me, at least. And but maybe to you too. You're in the elevator and you're holding your box of factor and you look to your right and you see somebody with grocery bags and you're just like <laughs> Yeah. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're a loser, dude. Uh, but no, Factor's where it's at, guys. Delicious, quick, easy meals. It's flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash oops50 and use the code oops50 to get 50% off. That's code oops50 at factormeals.com dot com slash oops five zero to get 50 percent off so dude i was watching this show fool me once on netflix it's a mini series it's pretty good it's like sort of there are things about it that just feel unrealistic and overly dramatic like it reminds me of a that i don't know if you saw the show the night agent or the no show, but i know i get the vibe of it or the flight attendant those are two shows that feel similar to me but like how fun the shows are like you kind of are willing to ignore some of the unrealistic stuff or like certain bad acting from like random side characters. But anyway, this show fooled me once. The acting is, is generally very good, I thought. And it's a good show, but whatever. So I posted a scene being like, this is stupid or something. Like from one specific scene. I really enjoyed the show and was enjoying it. And immediately, dude, like a dozen people just ruined the entire show for me. Ugh. Like it was clearly not the end. And somebody like, like, in many different ways, like not only just being like, oh, just wait, wait till you see the end. That's bad enough. But like specifically telling me what was really happening in a thing that I, a moment in a thing that I posted. And then one person went beyond like one person, not only spoiled that, but she just then spoiled the entire show. She just copied. She like asked AI chat GBT to like <laughs> give her bullet points of every single spoiler of the show and she copy and pasted it and messaged it. Yeah. Her, tell it, tell us what happened from this moment in the show on as concisely as possible and as much detail as possible. The entire show was immediately ruined for me. Did you even ask for any input? No, you just dude, posted it, right? No, I didn't ask for any input at all. I and, hate that. That's them just trying to, they're, they're trying so hard to just like be chill about it. And then in doing so, just ruin it for you. Are you going to watch, you're going to finish the show? I finished it, but I was like, this is, this is annoying. But this is interesting. So anybody who's seen the show will know this moment I'm talking about. Anyone who is not, it won't ruin anything. There's a scene where this guy, one of the characters, wakes up and he was sleeping, standing up on the edge of a bridge. Okay? And I'm like, and I said, that is stupid. Now, behind him is a female character from the show who is sleeping on him. Like they're standing and she's like got her head on his shoulder and they're standing and they both wake up at the same time. There's no railing that he could... There's a railing. He's holding onto the railing. Gotcha. But I've never Stop. heard of a person <laughs> sleeping, standing up. So anybody who has seen the show, in that moment, right, I don't think... I think that standing 
and sleeping, period, makes no sense. So whether or not it's both of them or it's one person, like my comment being like it's ridiculous to be standing up and sleeping theoretically holds up. It can end there. Nobody needs to reply to that statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs to tell me anything that I need and being like, you should know this or, oh, wait till the end or whatever. You don't need to do that there. It's just, it's crazy. And that's what you wrote? I wrote, oh, this is realistic. Like sleeping, standing up. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then I had the entire show spoiled for me and within a matter of minutes. They could have interpreted that as wink, wink. Like this looks ridiculous, but we all know what actually happens. And I don't that's think not so. fair. That's not fair. I think some people did that. I think they were being selfish and they were like, ooh, I want to be the one to tell him mm -hmm. that there's more to this than he thinks. Yeah. He, I don't think it was like them thinking I was being sneaky, being like, I already know what happens here, but I'm going to, you, know, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. It was obvious that I hadn't seen past that part. Yeah. Did you, did, so it ruined, did it ruin your viewing experience? 100%. Sure were, you, were you really enjoying it before? Yeah. That really sucks. And I was like bitching about the show for the rest of the time. And Hillary's like, you're now ruining the show for me. I was like, this show sucks. This sucks. I already know what happens. Stupid. It sucks. <laughs> but she loved that. Yeah. That sucks. I don't like, um, I don't like talking about reviewing movies or, or shows in detail with anybody, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to recommendations. I like to be very vague and I like the other person to be very vague too. I don't want to know anything. I don't want to see the recap. I don't want to see on the next episode. I don't even like when Netflix tells you how many more episodes you have left. Mm -hmm. I think that ruins it. Yeah. I just close my eyes and let the next episode start. Yeah. Vic and I have adopted your strategy with that. We watched, we're watching the morning show right now. Oh, uh, I heard it's good. And uh, there's a lot of plot points uh, throughout the show that come back that are gone for a while and come back many episodes later. We always make a point to skip that mm -hmm. because if they try to give you a little hint of like, hey, remember that thing that happened 30 hours ago that hasn't been talked about ever? I don't know. Let's just remind you that it happened. Like, yeah, 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 I yeah, don't yeah. want to see any of that totally. either. We're both smart enough and we pay attention enough to, right. we deserve to be completely blindsided 100%. as to whatever direction they decide to go. We do that every time because you Absolutely. mentioned that a couple years ago on the pod. Yeah, it's a good that. one, man. Yeah. And dude, not only that, so with this situation, like not only did they ruin the specific twist that could have potentially been unfolding in that specific moment in the show, unrelated, somebody ruined the biggest the point, somebody ruined the point of the entire show. <laughs> the point of the show is who did this? The show starts off like that, and we are trying to figure out what happened here. And someone told me that. That had nothing to do with what I showed on the screen. Somebody replied telling me the end of the show. And how many, in how many sentences? Like, dude, there's multiple spoilers. So, so that exact moment, spoiling that moment for me ruins the show, in my opinion. Because that's what the whole show is about. No. Is getting back to that first scene. Not even that. So there's a couple twists, say, right? It's one of these kind of shows where there's twists. Mm -hmm. Ooh, he did it? That's surprising. That whatever, you know what I mean? A lot of those kind of moments. So this specifically was in the top three biggest twists on the show. The thing that I was specifically talk to, talking about that people ruined for me, right? But unrelated to that, is the direct most important arc of the entire show that had nothing to do with that scene that somebody then told me. <laughs> dude, it had nothing to do with the scene. Just an asshole. It almost makes me want you, dude, I almost want you to like, if you guys end up watching it, I, it'll you'll think it's funny. Okay. You'll think all oh, this is funny. You yeah. Know? I don't want to like, we'll talk, we'll talk. I don't want to encourage you to watch things. We all, we all have dense lists of things to watch, but mm -hmm. um, dude, insane. Mm, yeah, I hate that. I hate when people do too much like that. They probably thought that they were being silly, but it really just was the worst possible thing you could do. Yeah, whack. Yeah. There, I think I told you this when it came to uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. I was a little late to seeing it. Uh, you I, did tell me this. I rented yeah. it. I went to uh, my neighbor's apartment upstairs. We were watching football months ago, and they had friends over that we never met. We started talking about movies, just going through all the big ones that came out uh, you know, last winter and – flower moon came up and i was like oh i haven't seen that one yet but i love scorsese and i love leo i'm, g I'm gonna see it and she said don't bother and this is a person i've never met before That's so she annoying. doesn't know my taste she knows nothing about me yet she is the expert and should tell me to not see a movie by arguably one of the best directors ever 
It's also nominated for Best Picture. So objectively, like, people thought it was good. So for her to be like, it would be one thing if it had a 9% on Rotten Tomatoes and you just didn't know that. Yeah. You know? And she said, she said, don't, don't even bother. And I actually, for that movie specifically, didn't watch trailers. I really went into it blind. I skipped all the ads that I'd see. I'd open up a different tab if there was a movie trailer before a YouTube video that I'd watch. Like, I really just avoided it. And uh, I do that on purpose so that nothing gets spoiled. And like you mentioned, we can watch everything blindsided. I said, oh, I'm excited to see it, actually. And then she said, trust me, you don't want to see it. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm still going to see it. And then she's like, well, you get the, like, it's really, like, you get the gist, right? You like know what happens, right? And I said, no, I haven't seen the trailers or anything. And then she spoiled um, she a started really, telling stuff. she spoiled something that happened at the very end. And she said, besides when blah, blah, blah happens, Everything is so skippable. Oh my god! And I wanted to, you know, you know the really violent videos of the people, the people sticking their thumbs in people's eyes and just pushing in. I thought you were going to say the really violent videos of people ripping TVs off the wall at parties. <laughs> no, not quite. There's a step above. I wanted to take her <laughs> face and push my thumbs in her eyes. That's how. I, that's what I imagined in my head as I said. I'm still going to see the movie anyway, but thank you. <laughs> um, it was enraging. And then I saw it, and then I died. Actually, I didn't like it. I thought, you it, was, did not I like thought it. it was very skippable. I actually agreed really? with her with what she said. But in the moment, I was like, who are you? You didn't like the movie? I didn't like it. We also watched it late at night, and that's like not setting yourself up for success. It was kind of disrespectful. This though, is a good late at night. point you're making. There are certain movies that you need to be watching at like 11 a.m. Yeah. They like require energy. And one of them is Maestro. I started watching it, and... It's cool. It's like shot really well, whatever, but like a difficult movie to get into. Um, if you, it's like later in the day, this is the new Cooper movie. Yeah. Bradley, sorry. That, I've never said Cooper movie. I was Cooper? trying to be Your too, boy Cooper? I was trying to be so chill. Very new Bradley Cooper song. movie. It's two hours and nine minutes. Hillary made, I mean, I'm, I'm going to watch it. And like, I like I like to get into movies during like Oscar season. I think it's fun. Like I try to watch all the best picture or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a few of them. I started watching that. I intend to finish it. I suspect I'll like it. I'm not totally sure. But Hillary said something funny about it. She's like, the style this movie is shot in is as inaccessible as the subject matter. <laughs> like, wow. Oh my God, that is cutting as fuck. That's very letterbox. She's like, nobody knows about anything happening in this movie. And I'm like, okay, fine. But like, is it maybe that's part of the reason why it's going to be fun or something? I don't know. So we were going back and forth about that. I intend to finish it. I've only, of the award season movies, I've only seen, as far as the best picture ones have go, I've seen four of the 10 so far. And I, I intend to watch all of them. The Academy Awards at the end of February? Uh, I think it's the beginning of March. Okay. So I'll tell you the ones I've seen. I've seen Sorry. Oppenheimer, Barbie, uh, Holdovers, and Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh-huh. Right now, I would say for me, it's Oppenheimer number one of those four. Holdovers two, Killers three, Barbie four. I didn't love Barbie personally. Mm. I liked Barbie. No, Barbie was fun. I didn't get why people hated it so much. I'm like, dude, fucking get a hobby. It's a fun <laughs> movie. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I was just, yeah, you know, I didn't love it. But. Yeah, I saw Oppenheimer. I saw Barbie. Um, I saw Flower Moon. I want to see Anatomy of a Fall. I heard that's a really good one. Yeah. And then uh, I think my favorite and the Zone of Interest. I want to see that you one saw too. It? I, uh, no, I, I want to see that one. Uh, my favorite movie of 2023 was Poor Things. Oh, that's on there the too. All the nominations. Yeah. I, I thought that. that movie was spectacular. I heard it's good. Yeah. Dude, so I took a solid core class, and one of the funniest lines I've ever heard in a fitness class was said by the instructor. Uh, and you know, I would say that even now more so as fitness instructors are becoming personalities. Like it's to me drawing like a different sort of person than it had 20 years ago or something. Maybe not 20. I mean, I'm trying to think how long I've been an adult. I mean, so almost, yeah, almost 20 years. Yeah. Drawing is in people that would take the class or the, instructor? the instructors. Okay. So it's like encouraging people to have like a more of a big personality and you get rewarded for it, right? So I've found that the instructors have gotten funnier and funnier as time has gone on. This instructor had the line of the air. So we're doing this thing where we're like, you're supposed to extend your leg, but not all the way. So he's like, he's like, that's right. Extend your leg almost straight, almost straight. Like who? <laughs> that's right. My ex-boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, zesty. I'm like, dude, what, what a line. A, that's great. What a zinger, man. That is a good zinger. Uh, I thought that was pretty What's good. What's the point of stretching... Like, what's the benefit of almost going straight? Well, I think that if you go fully straight, like, you can hyperextend your leg or something, and then you can, like, fuck your knee up or something. Hmm. So a lot of the time in some of these things, they'll be, like, trying to get you to do it like that as opposed to, like, fully straight or something. I don't know. 
Interesting. I think that is the method behind the madness. Dude, those classes, Vic does solid core. I walk by. So hard. Scary. It's like, hard. I'm scared of that place. Yeah. I'm scared of all those classes. It's hard, dude. Yeah. I yeah. It's very intimidating. Yeah, I would solid agree. core, you're on one of those tables, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like the that. hardest one of those mm-hmm. kind of classes. Like Pilates people would say that it's not Pilates. I've had that discussion with like Pilates instructors. Yeah. I can't, I don't even, I can't even fathom that, yeah. that comment. I don't Hard get it. Sure. I don't want to know. I'm too scared. <laughs> um, yeah. Sweet. Awesome. All right. Well, we should take it home. Yeah. Let's call it. Um, oops podcast guys. Thanks for listening. As always, we are here. We're talking about shit. And if there's anything you want to hear about, let us know. We're happy to kind of talk about stuff that you guys are interested in or let us let you know what we think about it. Yeah. Uh, thanks for all the support. I have a bunch of tour dates coming up. I'm going to be in Syracuse, Albany. I'm going to be in MA- Emmaus, Pennsylvania. I think we figured out it was called. That sounds um, right. That sounds right. That's all in March. Then I'm going to be in DC, uh, Atlanta and Portland, Oregon, mm. all coming up in the first half of the year. So come check out a show. Not Julio.com. Uh, Lynch, what's going on with you? Uh, check me out on TikTok as we continue to fight against Chipotle at Ryan is really polite. And then a little homework for you guys. If you can email us at oops, the podcast at gmail.com. I think it would be really fun and interesting to hear about, uh, anytime you were at an event or a party and there was someone that freaked out. Um, I think that that would be an interesting story to hear if you guys had that experience too. So just check us out on social, uh, check us out on TikTok, follow us on Twitter. Um, we really appreciate if you guys, uh, chit chat with us on Twitter, reply and, and favorite and retweet, just help grow the show. Um, and we're really excited about 2024 and we love you guys.